All right, this is going to be uh, how to solve a ballistics problem. Come on, pen, you can do it. There we go. How to solve a typical ballistics problem. All right, so let's lay the problem out. Um, so it says a 10 gram bullet is shot from a 5 kg rifle at a 10 kilogram sandbag. Um, hanging from a rope. The stand bag swings up <laughs> to a height of 65 centimeters. Okay. Now again, these are not necessarily realistic numbers because um, I just kind of made them up. So we're not sure if we're going to get an answer that would actually like tie into real life, but we'll find out. Uh, and then you're asked to find a bullet velocity. And as a bonus, the recoil speed of the rifle. Okay. Um, so just uh, let's just put a little quick picture here. Um, let's make sure we all can understand what we're talking about. So there's your rifle. Shoot it, and here's your bullet. Zipping out, and then you have a sandbag. This hanging from the ceiling, and that sandbag swings up when the bullet hits it like so okay and we see that the height here that it swings up is 65 centimeters this we said was 10 grams and this we said was five kilograms and this is a 10 kg sandbag okay so completely made up numbers but we're interested mainly in the process, not necessarily what actual values we get. Uh, with a little research, we could find out whether these values are realistic. Um, but this is kind of one way that you could actually figure out something like a bullet velocity. You could really do this. Um, and uh, one thing to realize, first of all, is that the bullet is going to stick in the bag. Okay, so it's going to fly into the bag and stay embedded in there. Okay. So that's an important part of this because we have to realize something. This is a certain type of collision. The bullet hitting this is a certain type of collision. If it hits and sticks, we know that it's an inelastic collision. Okay? And something that we have to realize is in an inelastic collision, kinetic energy is not conserved. Um, I mean, overall the energy is conserved in this entire system that's true it's just that all of the kinetic energy that this bullet brings and embeds into here does not turn into gravitational potential energy from here so you cannot go directly from gravitational potential energy here back to kinetic energy of the bullet there's an intermediate step the only way to solve an inelastic collision correctly is to use conservation of momentum so we must use for the collision must use momentum equations for that okay so that's a place that people often get tripped up all right so the first thing we need to do is work backwards from the gravitational potential energy that this uh, bag receives and realize that that came from the kinetic energy of the bag after the bullet has hit it okay so that's the first part so we could say this um, let's break it down into parts let's say the total energy at the end of this scenario, when the bag's at its maximum height, is found as 
m g h right so the mass we have here is 10 kilograms and we have a 10 gram bullet on there so we have uh 1000 sorry 10000 and 10 grams right but we have to be in terms of kilograms so 10.01 kgs right that's our mass times g right so there's the force part right times the height that it swings up and that's got to be in meters so 0 0.65 meters so give us the total potential gravitational energy or gravitational potential energy that that bag has at its max height so this uh, should give us somewhere around 63.8 joules okay uh, that's meters per second squared and that's meters so there's your newtons and there's your meters, so newton meters, right? Kilogram meter per second squared, that's a newton times meters, and a newton meter is a joule, okay? Um, now, where did this come from? Well, this came from the initial kinetic energy that that bag had just after the bullet struck it. This is after the bullet's already in it. It has some kind of kinetic energy, right? It has a velocity, and then as it swings up, its kinetic energy gets converted into gravitational potential energy. It slows down, but it converts EK into EG. So we know then that the initial EK must have been equal to 63.8 joules. So then we could say that. Okay, so all of this energy that's in the pendulum system came from EK, and we know that that's one half mv squared. Okay. So we could rearrange this, and this is what we're after. And this will be the velocity, the initial velocity of the bag with a bullet in it. Okay, bag bullet. All right, so let's rearrange for V. So V should be equal to 2 times whatever EK we have, right, divided by the mass of the bullet plus bag, and that was squared, so we got to find the root of it here, right? So we're just algebraing this guy to get V by itself. So 2 times 63.8 joules divided by 10.01 kgs. And don't forget the square root. 3.6 meters per second. Okay, perfect. So now we know this. After the bullet struck, this thing was moving at 3.6 meters per second. Now we have to go back and we have to use momentum to solve this inelastic collision. And that looks like this. Okay. So this has a momentum equal to its mass times its velocity, right, before the collision. And the bag has a p equals mv, but in this case, its velocity is zero. So it's zero momentum, right? And we understand that in a, in a collision scenario, the pre and the post conditions have the same momentum. So in other words, all of the momentum of the, of the bag bullet system is contained in the only object with momentum to begin with, all right? So whatever momentum we have here is the same as the momentum that was in the bullet to begin with. So we'll say P before is equal to P after. All right. So then we'll say the MV of the bullet, a little B for bullet, has to equal uh, M, and this is the bullet mass, plus mass of the bag, right? So they are added together now times the velocity of the, oh, i got to put something different, uh, S, sandbag, okay? Um, and what we're solving for now is this value here. So do a little rearrangement. And let's put some numbers in. All right, so we've got, um, well, this plus this should be 10.01 kgs and 3.6 meters per second, okay? Divided by the mass of the bullet, 
That should give us the initial velocity that the bullet had before the collision. Well, we get a number that might not necessarily be realistic um, of 3,603 meters per second. Uh, so we're saying it's going to cover 3.6 kilometers in one second. I don't know if that's realistic. Um, to hang on a sec. I want to actually check on that. Okay, well, we searched, we searched around for a second there, and we realized that this, <clears throat> this would be the highest velocity projectile ever. Um, there's even some experimental rail guns that don't quite go this fast. So I think maybe the problem was, uh, well, when I was making this up, either making the bag swing too high, making the bag too heavy, or making the bullet too light. The point isn't so much what number we got out of the end, we got an unrealistic number, but that we can solve a problem like this. Okay, now the last part of this is to find the recoil of the rifle. I'm a little frightened. I feel like it might be scary high, but let's see. All right, so this, we'll just get through this last part here and uh, let's see what we get. So we got a 5 kg rifle. We've just shot a 10 gram bullet out of it at a velocity of 3603 meters per second okay so before anything right before anything happens the momentum of this entire system equals zero right before we shoot the rifle the rifle and the bullet are sitting still um, we then realize that after the bullet is shot the momentum to the right it's exactly equal to the momentum to the left. Okay, so the total momentum of this bullet has to be exactly cancelled out by the momentum over here. So what we'll say then is we'll say that MV of the rifle has to be equal to MV of the bullet. Um, rifle, bullet. Does that make sense? Alright, so let's figure this out. So 0 0.010 kgs traveling at 3603, right? That's some momentum over here. As we go to the momentum over here, well, we know the mass of the rifle. We don't know um, what velocity it's going to be zinging back over to the left at. Okay, so we divide then the mass off of here, divided by 5 kgs. And let's see what we get. And we get we get 7.2 meters per second, which, <clears throat> incidentally, is exactly what compared to the sandbag. Right, twice, it's half the weight. Okay, so momentum-wise, it's gonna have twice the velocity, but the same momentum. Right, momentum is conserved throughout this entire scenario, and kinetic energy to gravitational potential energy is also conserved. The only place there's no conservation is in this inelastic collision. Okay? Uh, and some people were pointing out that we don't need to do this in two steps, and that's absolutely true. So let's just, uh, just as a side note here, see how we can go from gravitational directly to kinetic. So we know that EK here gets converted <clears throat> to EG here with no energy being lost. So EK is becoming EG, so one half MV squared becomes MGH. Major note, mass goes away, and that's true. You understand that no matter what the mass of an object is, it's only the initial velocity uh, when I throw it up or launch it upward that dictates how high it will go. Mass is irrelevant, and it's the same reason why, regardless of what mass I have up here, it will always have the same acceleration towards Earth, right? And it will always end up with the same velocity at the end of it. Mass cancels out. So V then is going to be equal to the root of 2 times GH. Okay, so that's a quicker way of getting to the velocity of the sandbag. I just wanted to break this down to make sure there's no um, space monkeying going on. All right.